Yeah. 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 Call the committee of the whole meeting for Tuesday, March 7th, 2017. The order, the first order of business is roll call. So, buddy. Here. O'Brien. Here. Callahan. Here. Wolf. Here. Transit. Here. Uh, Meisler. Here. Stark. Here. Mueller. Here. Bonnerman. Here. Phelan Attic. Here. Uh, Cerrone. Here. Pseudo. Here. Brown. And McFadden. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, we have the necessary quorum to conduct business. And next up on the agenda is uh, approve the minutes from February 21st, 2017. So moved. Second. Motion by Stark, second by Chansit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Items to be removed, added, or changed? None. Heard of anything? Um, matters from the public? Anybody in the public want to say anything tonight? Um, next up would be the consent agenda, which includes the January 2017 financials. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Chansit, second by McFadden. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving right on to Ordinance 17-22. Uh, approve and authorize the acquisition of real property, extinguishing the driveway easement, benefiting 8 North River Street. Um, we discussed this before, so if anybody has any further questions or any we need to clarify on it. If not, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by chance, it's second by McFadden. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Project status. Well, I've got quite a list here. <laughs> um, blank piece of paper. One, one of the things that I wanted to uh, report on was at the last meeting, I was asked about the status of the review of executive session minutes. And I wanted to let you know that we, I have a, uh, an appointment scheduled with the city attorney for March 15th. And so we will uh, begin that project once we have one meeting I'll have a better idea of at what pace we'll be able to get through the notes, but our intent is to review the 2016 notes first and uh, work backward from there. I also wanted to report today we met with the uh, River Street business owners and also property owners, and there were about uh, 20 or 25 people in attendance at that meeting, as well as uh, Dave Patzelt attended the meeting along with representatives from um, Public Works, the Police Department, uh, the um, Community Development and Economic Development. And we presented information as we head into the first large construction phase of the project, that being the demolition of the buildings at the site for One Washington Place and also the demolition of the buildings on the Larson Becker site and the construction of the temporary parking lot at the Larson Becker site. We wanted to inform those area business and property owners um, what to expect. And one of the things that has been developed by uh, Gary Holm, we're gonna create a, a living document that is the construction schedule. That'll let them know exactly what type of work is being done in the area, but also, and, and perhaps more importantly, um, how that will affect if there will be any um, sidewalk closure, street closures, or public parking area um, closures so that they can anticipate those things as far in advance as possible and uh, perhaps adjust their uh, business needs to that. Um, we also uh, discussed parking in the area in general. That was a topic we spent quite a deal of time on. And the business owners let us know that they would like to see us step up enforcement of the time periods for parking allowed in the downtown area. Many of the business owners expressed concern that some of the other business owners are using the spaces which are located directly adjacent to um, the shops in the downtown and taking up areas where uh, their customers might park. Unfortunately, we let them know, unfortunately, you know, our, our police department is not staffed such that we have someone that we can dedicate to that type of enforcement. But we have encouraged the um, 
them as the community in the area if they do see uh, someone who is violating those rules to call and let us know and that we will then come out and enforce. Um, we followed up with that. We had our um, weekly staff meeting this afternoon as well. And among staff, we also discussed parking issues and ways that we might um, better inform the public in that, that area and really in all of downtown. We do have a city parking map <coughs> that's available on the city maps uh, area. It's right at the bottom of the homepage of our uh, website. But I don't think that we've done a very good job of publicizing that. And um, it is a very detailed map that includes not only public parking lots, but every public parking space in the entire downtown area. And it's color coded to show what the restricted hours are for each of those spaces. Uh, something else that we discussed with the business owners is that the city intends to hire a consultant who are experts in the field of um, seismology and what they're going to do is uh, they've given us uh, a proposal and let us know based on the work that we're doing in the demolition and constructing the parking lot phase of the project that portion which the city is responsible for um, what the expected um, impacted area would be for which we would want to go out and do a before um, assessments of properties such that in the event that there's any um, uh, that the property owner feels that there has been any damage that was caused by the work that we're doing we have a proper recording of the before construction condition of those buildings and it is a relatively I, I considered it to be relatively inexpensive for the um, the risk that it's protecting us against it should be less than $10,000 for the entire project. But I can give you more information on that. That was very well received by the business community. They had a question as to what would happen in the event that damage occurred and who would be responsible. We let them know that all of our contractors must provide us with certificates of insurance and that it would be those uh, insurance companies that they would then make the claim to whichever contractor was deemed to be responsible for that damage and everybody seemed to uh, have a very positive reaction to that situation they they seemed to appreciate that we were going to take a look at the before condition and um, and that there was a path to them recovering in the event that there was damage um, we also let them know that We've designated Gary Holm, our Director of Public Works, as the liaison for this project, such that if there's any condition, um, they see unsafe working conditions, they see materials where they should not be, areas which are blocked, um, that they can contact him and have their issues resolved. He's their point of contact. We're also beginning a weekly meeting beginning next Tuesday at 3 p.m. we'll meet on the east side of the footbridge and it's just an opportunity for those business owners to come over and share information with us and for us to share any new information that we might have for them. We started this um, last fall and unfortunately there wasn't much new information to share and so uh, but now that we've entered the first big phase of the project we think that there'll be more for us to exchange and uh, share about. So it's a very good meeting. I don't know if anybody has any questions about it, Susan? I just have one comment. I'm used to the mic yelling. Um, it, it came up again today, and it, it always makes me laugh when I hear people say this because I'm on the TRICOM board. People will say, well, for parking, I call the non-emergency fire number or police number. We don't have one of those anymore. You should always just call 911 because if you don't, if you call the non-emergency <coughs> number, you come to the switchboard who then sends your call to TRICOM. So if you're going, if you want to talk to the police about anything, parking infractions, anything, just pick up the phone and call 911. It's not an inconvenience to them, but there is no longer a non-emergency police number. So just 911. Can, can, can you tell me what this uh, seismology company is going to do for us? Um, yes, so they are going to come out and visit 
each one of the um, properties that surround the project. They're going to do a visual inspection of both the outside exterior and then the interior of the um, foundations of the building. And then they're also going to take um, pictures. I don't know if it's also going to be video. I've, uh, internally, one of our engineers mentioned that that's typical in these types of cases that they also take video evidence of what the current state of the buildings is. I've, I've done this a great many times, and, and video is the way to go. OK. And then they also See. put the sensors in the ground, too, and monitor during the, um, during the project. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, one last thing that was really important to the businesses, is we talked about promoting the businesses in the River Street area, on the Wilson Street area, during construction. And we had a really great conversation about that. Dave Patzelt has offered the, um, the construction fencing that will go up will likely have windscreen on it. And he'd like to advertise that the area businesses are still open and perhaps even put the logos for the business on there. Chris Aston offered to reach out to all of the area businesses and get them together to brainstorm and strategize ways that we can promote um, those local businesses as well. And I assured them that um, we would do everything that we possibly could to make sure that um, the community comes out to support their businesses so that not only do they make it through the construction phase, but they're here to enjoy the success that the uh, economic hand grenade, was it, that is going to uh, create in, in that area. And that's it for that. Um, you know, other questions about that meeting? Um, tomorrow I'll be going to Wabansi Community College. They've invited me to be a judge uh, for the uh, John J. Swalik President's Achievement Awards, which is a scholarship program there uh, given to students who have overcome great challenges to pursue their educational goals. Um, and that's it that I have for projects, except that um, Nick Sroan had contacted me this week um, to that there was uh, some concerns in his neighborhood about um, people who are walking dogs and allowing them to relieve themselves in neighbors' yards and not picking up the waste from that. And we checked our ordinances, and there does not appear to be an ordinance that directly addresses that matter and so we wanted to just discuss tonight how, how we might handle that right my the first response from Rhonda was that now it's covered in a specific ordinance she sent um, and then uh, under municipal code but I, I read it and it mentioned the sidewalks and streets so I, I just questioned what about parkways and private properties and mm -hmm. And she said it was covered, and then she looked into, she realized that she was confusing Batavia Code with North Aurora Code in response. She's like, yeah, we should probably address this and, and you know, have something in there. Um, so that's when we said, yeah, we probably should. What, I don't know, what uh, is typical amongst other uh, communities? I don't know, but what's that? I walk out in the front yard and hand him a bag. <laughs> it is one of those things that maybe a, a neighbor to neighbor it should be handled that way, but it's some a simple thing to include in yeah, the code. Some, some associations have some pretty strict rules on that, and right. we'll find each other. I know in my neighborhood you got to watch out for that kind of stuff. So it just, again, be neighborly. Yeah. Right. So I don't know what the what we should do, direct staff to, to research what... Mm -hmm surrounding communities have in their sure. code and then decide if we want to include it in ours or we can not. Have you or... do a PSA on BATV? <laughs> What's that? We can have you do a PSA for BATV. We could. <laughs> yeah. That's one option. <laughs> we just have I'm to an A on, on that one. We just have to figure out uh, who's the bad <laughs> guy. Let us vote. <laughs> yeah, well, it's pretty easy <laughs> since we're televised tonight to just say, Please pick up after your dogs and don't leave your poop all over like in the middle of the footbridge as I walk across the river every day. These are just common sense things and you would think most people would figure that out on their own. They are common sense, but I guess the question 
that's out there is what are ramifications for that one jerk who yeah. continues to do that? What <laughs> course of action is there? Rebel's face in it. I mean, it's one. <laughs> Home delivery. Home delivery. <laughs> Flaming bags. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like that's going to be one, just one more thing that's going to end up way down on the list of. It's way down on the list, but things that it was uh, to brought some my attention after. from a uh, things an angry need. resident, a things frustrated resident. So right. I said I would follow up and see what can be done. Well, if she said it was confused with North Aurora's. Just take North Aurora's language. Uh, right. I mean, right. It shouldn't be that. Not really do a yeah. survey. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> well, and I think, too, we can publicize it and say, hey, it's spring. Everybody's going to be out walking dogs. Right. Make sure you clean Wet. up after yourself. They, they get mushy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Welcome to the first televised cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got well, enough this is what really is. That. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to number eight, other. Does anyone have any others? Or is that enough other? I, I just want to say thank you to uh, Laura and to Chris. Um, I was engaged by um, a prolific FOIA uh, producing resident. And um, in listening to her and talking to her, I've been tremendously frustrated. Uh, by the number of public postings that she does um, that are full of misinformation. So I said, look, what information do you really need? What are you trying to get at? And Chris and uh, Laura did a very good job of listening to what her real questions were. I backed up, and Kevin, you might appreciate this as a reporter. You know that when you do a FOIA, you're looking for a document. She was asking for a document that does not exist. And so rather than tell her, no, we can't tell you any information, they wrote her a personal was multiple pages. It contained answers to every question she could possibly have regarding finances. And my point was, is when she received this document and read it, it would be impossible for her to make a misstatement regarding the finances of this project. And not 24 hours later, she proved me wrong. So I'm done with that mess. Um, but I'm very satisfied and very happy that the city went out of its way. Because um, the spirit of FOIA is just you give the information or you give them a denial. You did not say no. You made a document special for them. So I want to say thank you for that, that extra service. It sure. meant a lot. Thank you. OK, anything else? If not, I would uh, welcome uh, motion for Second. 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 Motion by O'Brien. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Mike's happy. Oh, yeah. Far from a record. Not bad. No, we did not.